The presence of anti-SCL7 antibodies can sometimes cause anxiety in patients. Not only does this predict more widespread involvement of the skin, but it also indicates the possibility of lung involvement and tends to predict a worse prognosis. The finding of anti-SCL antibodies and test results sometimes prompts a series of expensive tests such as high-resolution CAT scans and echocardiograms and additional blood work. And this is expensive financially as well as time-wise and emotionally to patients. Because of this, it is of utmost importance that anti-SCL7 antibodies be determined with the highest amount of accuracy and they should only be interpreted in the context of the symptoms and signs that are physically present. Anti-SCL7 antibodies are directed against the topoisomerase 1 enzyme, which is an enzyme that relaxes the coils in the DNA, giving other enzymes that are involved in the replication of the cell access to DNA. Without topoisomerase 1, cell replication cannot take place. The most accurate method of measuring SCL70 antibodies is by immunodiffusion. But unfortunately, this is a labor-intensive and long process that can last for up to two to three days for each test. Because of this, almost all of the laboratories use alternative methods of testing, such as ELISA or immunoblood testing or chemiluminescent immunoassays. But this is a problem because what these tests gain in terms of speed, they lose in terms of accuracy. These commercially available tests are therefore prone to false positive results. To make matters worse, the labs that perform these tests do not usually highlight the high probability of false positive results with anti-SCL70 antibody testing. As a result, providers do not warn their patients of the high probability of false positive results in anti-SCL70 antibody testing. I visited websites for five of the largest laboratories in the United States, and only three of them warned of the possibility of false positive results. A positive result for anti-SCL70 antibodies may well be a false positive especially if the clinical signs and symptoms are not there. If immunodiffusion testing is made more widely available, we would be able to interpret these tests with greater confidence. Until such time, the finding of positive anti-SCL70 antibodies on a test result does not make a diagnosis of scleroderma. The diagnosis is a clinical one, and is made by a trained medical professional performing a complete physical examination and evaluating all of the information that is available to them. Thank you for watching. Till the next video, stay healthy and stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.